Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of June. This month we're going to take a look at the Papkatri that's happening in the sky. That's big news. That's really happening across July. But there is going to be some hemming on the way to that. And I think we can discuss that this month. So in the mini reports, what I'll be doing is we'll be taking a look at that Papkatri for each of you. We'll also be taking a look at the astrology for June in brief. I'm going to do an overview at the beginning like I always do. And we're also going to take a look at the Johnny Depp case. It's such a big case. It has taken over the internet and it's definitely worth talking about. So you can use the jump links below, the 21 jump links. Are there going to be 21 jump links? I don't know, maybe. I think, well, there'll be definitely 12, but there's maybe a few more than that. But if you'd like to skip ahead to the Johnny Depp case, you can, or you can stick around. We are going to talk about the astrology for June. Now, before I do that, I just want to welcome all the new subscribers. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining, for subscribing, for liking. I forget to say it. I always forget to say it. In fact, I always forget to say, please do subscribe if you have a moment. It really helps out small channels like mine. It helps keep this whole thing going for everybody. It helps keep this free for everybody. And yeah, it, it, you will be notified of the reports as they come. You can watch what you like, you know, you don't have to watch all the videos or any of that, but um, do watch and like when you can. Put a like as well, that helps, all that kind of thing, or a dislike, it doesn't matter. I don't mind if you like it or you dislike it, but you know, um, and of course, if you dislike it, you can unsubscribe as well, you know. And But also comment in the comments below. This is a, an open forum. You can say whatever you like. Uh, I don't censor the comments, you know. You can, you can s express yourself. But what I do find is that the people who come here, everyone's high vibe, everyone's high caliber. People are very kind to each other in the comments. And, you know, people are just lovely who come here. So I think if you do subscribe, you're going to really enjoy your time here. So welcome to all of those who have subscribed, who will subscribe, all that stuff. Okay, let's take a look. You can see why I don't do this very often, this promotional stuff. I'm not very good at it. All right, let's take a look at the astrology for June. What's going on? We have got Saturn in retrograde in Aquarius, and that's happening all month. That's offering us stable energy you know because we're going to be covering old ground that saturn has already covered so saturn is offering us some stability here you'll be covering recent old ground again in some way in your life um, it could be regarding friends networking opportunities how you bring money in finances that kind of thing mercury moves forward from 4th june onwards uh, it's still in a great position there in Taurus. This is great for art. This is great for creativity. If you are an artist, this is this beautiful energy. So this is definitely a time to be writing, documenting, creating, having fun with your, your creative skills or, or gaining more creative skills. We've got the sun moving into Gemini. This is a beautiful place for the sun. The sun is strong in Gemini uh, from 16 June to 16 July. This is generally good for courage. This is great if you're looking for work, if you're looking to switch jobs or grow your network, this could be a good time in a general sort of a sense. The sun will be receiving fourth aspect from Mars from 27th June. So this is from 16 June to 27th June. And I see this as energizing the sun. This could be good, that could be extra physical energy for more activity, more output, but this might irritate the sun's lord mercury as well so but perhaps mercury really is having a good time there in, in taurus I, I should think so uh, now the 16th june is an interesting date this month this is when venus is conjunct rahu so venus and rahu will be together in aries and uranus will be in the house as well so with this rahu and venus coming together you could be very impulsive you could experience a lot of desire okay so this, this could be quite passionate even because this is venus in a mars sign that's often a combination of passion but there's uranus in the house as well sudden change so you know yes you could be impulsive but there could be sudden change here um, this 
could manifest in you wanting to express something or could be and it, it could even be that there's something you want or there's something that you just and it could be something you want to buy um, but we've got Mars and Jupiter in the 12th and what I'm seeing here with this interesting thing happening on the 16th of June with Venus and Rahu is that you might have some tremendous desire or you want to go in some direction but you and you want to do something impulsive maybe but you feel the restraint of Saturn's aspect uh, for a start and then of course we've got the Lord of where all this action is 12 places away so even some form of loss but I'll be covering some of this for some of the signs. I know Pisces, I do talk about this for you guys. So have a look at your mini report for all of this. But the big news is that we've got all month Jupiter hemmed by Mars and Saturn. Okay, this is, this is the big news. And then from 27 June onwards, we have a proper Pap Kartri in place, which lasts all of July. Now, I know some astrologers have been talking about the fact that I think we're in a pub car three now, some of them are saying, uh, possibly because of Rahu. But I actually don't count Rahu in the pub car three. I, I, don't, I don't know exactly why that is. I can't particularly refer to an author or somebody where I learned this from. But uh, from what I know, I think with the, how I use it and how I've seen it in practice as well, is it pub car three? A classic is when Jupiter is hemmed between Saturn and Mars and I've seen this in when I do client work with you guys and I've seen this I've seen this deliver um, actually a difficult husband for women I've seen that this can be a, a really difficult placement so I know this to work well with the main major planets it's a bit like you know, Valaki yoga or Dharmani yoga or some of those yogas where you're looking at the planets but you don't count Rahu or Ketu. These are one of the ones where I actually don't count Rahu or Ketu here. Uh, I like to see, you know, the, the proper planets here and, and I'm seeing a, a Papkatri. It's, it's going to happen from 27 June onwards. But in the lead up to that we have Hemming. We have Jupiter hemmed in between two challenging planets Saturn and Mars okay so how I'm seeing this is I think this is going to be tension and I think on the world scene we're going to see tension escalate so we're going to see it across June I think June will be an okay month but then let's watch July July could be tense on the world scene and early August there could be some massive challenge there could even be maybe a catastrophe or a lockdown or something. I don't know what it is, but early August is not looking so good to me. So that is what I'm seeing. But I'm seeing June as being an okay month, but there's kind of tension is just cranking up and building slightly. This is how I'm seeing things. So I've got written here, July through to August could be really tense on the world stage. And I think those of you who have subscribed to the newsletter, I haven't checked the newsletter, but I'm pretty sure the one I did at the start of the year, I did identify early August as being a tense time in the world. So let's keep our eyes on it and, and let's see. And, and what I love about the comments below is that a lot of you will write in and you'll tell me that, you know, hey, something did happen or, you know, it didn't happen or whatever it is, you tell me, you let me know. Um, you know if it doesn't happen, that's the thing. Maybe this isn't the system for you, but uh, a lot of you do report back and you do let me know, hey, that thing that you mentioned, that actually really lined up with my life. You know or what I saw in the news so that's always it's always good feedback to hear but of course I like to hear if it if it doesn't work out as well you're welcome to tell me anything that's on your mind all right let's take a look at the Johnny Depp case shall we take a look let's do it it's it's a little bit of um, cosmic gossip but you guys know I like a bit of that now and then I don't indulge too often and I won't put it in the title but what I will do is I will use the hashtag I think it's something like justice for Johnny I do want to see justice for Johnny Depp who doesn't the whole internet wants to see him succeed from this case and we're going to talk about why that is so we're going to take a look at his chart I'll talk you through his chart I'll talk you through what I see and I'll also explain a little bit about why this case has, has been gripping everyone. Well, let's start with that actually. 
this case has kind of gripped everyone's imagination. Why? Why has this taken the internet by storm? It's done that because we've got Rahu in Aries and we've got Ketu in Libra. So the line of relationships is active. Okay, that one seven axis is now active and we can see this play out. The big news at the moment is this incredible case, right? So Ketu in Libra, the south node in Libra, in relationships. This is all about love. This is all about marriage. This is all about two people coming together. This is about two people moving apart. We're all touched by this, you know, to some degree. And I think people are interestingly watching the case might be, <clears throat> might be therapeutic for some people as well. You know, through watching what's happening, people are learning lessons, people are understanding their own personal lives um, a bit better as well. So I think people are using this as a, as a tool for self-reflection as well, which is good because we've got Rahu in Aries, we've got Ketu in Libra. This is, this is great. Uh, let's take a look at Johnny Depp's chart. I'm going to bring it up on my screen as well, but I've also got some notes here, so I'll do both. I'll bring up the chart and I'll talk you through some of my notes here. So let's take a look at the chart. What do I see here? I'll give you a, just a very like two, three minute taste of what I see. I did this actually, I sat with my mum. She's been watching the case a bit more than me. She knows some of the details of his life and I ran some of this past her and she confirmed that, yep, she was like, yep, all that's correct from what she knows of him. So what I can see here is that he's got Mars in the second house, right? Mars in the second house. Not only is it Mars in the second house, we've got Uranus there and we've got Pluto there as well. I do think that he would have had a tough childhood and there would have been aggression in the home. I think um, there would have been now mother or father. I'm seeing challenge with mother for sure, but like there would have been situations as he was growing up that he was walking on eggshells. He didn't know what was coming next. Um, there could be fighting, you know, it's that whole thing where you're afraid of a parent or something along these lines. We've got Uranus here, we've got changeability, and we've got Mars here, we've got aggression, right? So there's aggression in the home and there's changeability. It's like, you don't know if someone's going to be happy or sad or what, like, and it's scary, right? So another thing that that would have done, that kind of early childhood, one of the things that that would have done is it would have developed him psychically in some way. So because of that, he would have... Uh, gained some form of psychic gifts and we can kind of see that being hinted at a little bit here with this moon Ketu conjunct a strong strong Ketu Ketu conjunct moon Ketu conjunct mind um, this can be a person who has some form of psychic gifts when you've got the moon on the Rahu Ketu axis that is uh, a person can access beyond the veil or read read beyond the veil he'll have something like this I think but we can see that he would have had a difficult relationship with mother we've got moon there so first lord as well in the sixth house it's a very difficult spot for first lord it can be a difficult spot for the first lord to be it can also be very good but this is moon this is mother and it's conjunct ketu so there could even be some form of uh, abandonment wound or attachment wound or something like that happening with this person as well. We've got Rahu in the 12th. Rahu is in Gemini. Gemini is speech, it's speaking. When we look at the charts of actors, we are looking at, you know, houses two and three and five are pretty good to be looking at. You, you want to see maybe a bit of seven, 10, 11, any one of those. But he's got Gemini here, so that's great for an actor. The other thing that's great for an actor is uh, the 12th house, okay? 12th house, Hollywood. Hollywood, you know, it's that, um, I'm just looking at Neptune there as well, because I know that in Western astrology, I, th I think, am I right about this? They count Neptune as being the Lord of Pisces, if I've got that right. I can check that when I'm editing. But basically we've got Rahu up here in the, in the 12th. And I always call the 12th the place of fantasy thinking, the place of fantasies. So now I haven't watched too many of his films. I, I know he's is it Pirates of the Caribbean and all that kind of thing. So I, I imagine that that's some realm of fantasy or something like that. So of course he'd been making those kind of films, fantasy type films, highly fictional type films. Um, 
that kind of thing. But film is good for him. Entertainment is good for him because it's a loss, all right? Because entertainment, what is, an, what is entertainment? Entertainment is total loss. You lose the time. You sink the time. You never get it back, right? I've often had people write that on my pick of cards. <laughs> Some people have written things like, oh, that's time I'll never get back. Not many of you, my pick a card audience is lovely and I thank all of you who are there. But once or twice, some people have written that and fair point, fair point, you know, it's true. I've drained loads of hours, my, you know, spare time hours into pick a card as well. But entertainment is, it is loss. You lose the time there, right? So that's, he's making the movies, right? Rahu in the, in the 12th house, but in Gemini. If we look at the Lord, of the 12th house there, that's conjunct Venus. So that's the artist combination. So he's an artist, he makes things, he would love making things. Um, sun is interestingly not the happiest to be here, but I don't mind sun here too much. I mean, that could be related to early childhood as well, though there are other, I've written down some Ishtakashtafala, that's not looking too bad. I had a look at his D12 and that as well. I mean, if I was to go deep in here, I would study a lot more, but, what I'm seeing with that 11th house here is that that's, there's fantastic wealth coming out of there. Um, so we've got Rahu in the 12th. So he's needed courage to go into that 12th house and to be making movies, okay? He's needed courage to do that, to pursue. He might have been doing ordinary jobs before where he's service work, hard work, some kind of working hard in the 6th. But then up in the 12th, now if he's got the courage to make that leap into the 12th and to make movies and to pursue his heart's desire and to do that kind of work, if he does it, he'll make a lot of money. We can see that Lord of the 12th is in the 11th. Now this is Mercury. This is lots of little packets of money. So I would imagine that the harder he works, it's like, so Rahu's like an accelerator. You press on that accelerator, the harder he works in that 12th house of his, it'll just clock up the money. Royalties after royalties, just piling up. It's pretty incredible, right? Because also there's a Dan Yoga being uh, produced here, 11 and two, very beautiful, right? So strong, big, good gains. There's no blemish there either. You know, there's no Rahu in the way. There's no Saturn messing anything up, right? There's no uh, Mars aspect there. No, this, this is good. So that's looking fantastic. The gains are sensational here. Another thing that's aiding his fame massively is that incredible Saturn Mahapurush, uh, Shasha Mahapurush Yoga. All right, now we're gonna talk about that in a moment. We're gonna go in detail there, but let's tick off Jupiter before we keep going. Now Jupiter's in the ninth, ninth Lord in the ninth house. Okay, that's great. That's great for fortune. It's really, really good. But unfortunately, it is in Pisces, okay? So there is some, there can be some form of loss is possible through Jupiter. And he is in Jupiter Mahadasha and he is going through, wow, it's a rough time. I mean, this is just awful, right? Who wants to be in this situation? Nobody wants to be in this situation. This is, and that's karma, okay? That the karma is, no, you never visualize it, you never dream of it, you don't want it. And yet everything conspires to make sure that that happens. It's an inevitability, right? So you are led into it. You have to do it. You have to pay the debt. Pisces is here. There is loss here. And we do have Mars aspect coming from that troubled childhood, that troubled early beginning, okay, is coming on to Jupiter here. He's in his Jupiter Mahadasha and he is discovering that this world uh, is not all fun and games. It's, it's quite difficult actually. Now let's get onto this Saturn because when I first looked at this chart, that was the big thing that just absolutely, it just smacked me in the face. I was just like, whoa, look at, I've never seen one of those before, right? So I've never seen it quite in this way. I have seen Shasha Mahapurush Yoga many times in, in client charts, but I've never seen one like this. Now this is special because this is a very, very powerful Saturn. He's in great Digbala enormous strength let me yeah that's quite good there i was just looking at one of my tables um he's in retrograde as well okay so it's really powerful so we got okay massive dig bala saturn revels in this place this is where he's glorious and magnificent the sun dies here and he is the best 
right? So Saturn is powerful. Now Saturn is in his own house, and as I said, he's in a Shasha Mahapurush yoga. He's also got all the Kendras to himself. Okay, he's got he's got all of this Kendra to himself, but he's got all of the Kendras to himself. So this is a big planet with big real estate. It's just commanding the whole thing. It's it's extraordinary. So this is power. This is fame. This is the other thing is this man won't be allowed to if he lies, he will pay. Right. The setup of this chart, we do have a Saturn moon connection here. When I want to see someone who's truthful or honest, we can see that with a Saturn moon connection. So we have one. We've got Saturn aspecting the first house, which is Cancer. So this is a Saturn moon connection right here. He can't afford to lie. Saturn will, you know, spank him. Right? Saturn will make him pay. He can't afford to lie. Uh, it, it will not be a good thing for him. It is interesting. He has gone through his Sarisati phase, and it's interesting that he married um, Amber Heard just before going into Sarisati, and then Sarisati begins, and then all the pain began too. Now, I don't know. I haven't watched all of these cases. I don't know. You know, I, I can't tell you. Uh, who's right who's wrong that's for the jury to decide but one of the things I can talk a little bit about is I can talk about this Saturn here so I can't particularly say um, I can tell you he's truthful I can tell you that he's had challenges with mother challenges with childhood and that is impacting this Mahadasha that he's in it's creating dark nights of the soul it's creating enormous difficulties I, I would definitely say the period before the Sarisati, I would definitely predict good things there, like a marriage, for example. But would I have predicted that over the Sarisati period that he'd be going through all this stuff about his reputation? I, I may not predict that, but I would say that it would be challenging. And it would be challenging if he has not been truthful. Saturn will be making him pay for that, right, in some way. So... Again, I don't know the ins and outs, but what I, I, what I, one thing I, I can talk about Saturn in the seventh house, and I think it's definitely worth doing that. I'm just checking the time here. We're okay. Well, it's worth talking about Saturn in the seventh house because this is where we can all learn lessons from this placement. It's an incredible placement. Um, Saturn in Shasha Mahapurush Yoga. Mahapurush, I think, is the word that translates to hero. When I told my mum that it's Shasha Mahapurush Yoga, she said, ah, oh, the yoga of a great man. And I thought, yeah, that because, yeah, and Mahapurush translates to hero, right? So one of the notes I have here is do not underestimate these people. Okay, now one of the things about Saturn in the placement where it's in is that people who have this can be low on self-confidence, actually. They can even underestimate themselves, but other people will underestimate them too. We've got Saturn aspect on the Ascendant. We've got Saturn's 10th aspect on the fourth house of home, but it's also heart as well. There's, there'll be something about these people where there's some sorrow or there's some sadness and people will not um, recognize or realize that they're actually really amazing people. I think people will underestimate these people quite a bit. And there's low self-esteem in this placement as well. Even though it's in such a great yoga and Saturn is shining so beautifully and it's really quite incredible, um, there is low self-esteem here as well. Isn't that interesting? I've got the note here, why is this case on? And I've written here that Amber Heard has been accusing Johnny of abuse, but her behavior has been tantamount to bullying. She has kept tapping on his window and eventually Johnny Depp got sick of this and is now suing her. And I've written, yeah, the overarching crux of this case is, and this is, this is what I think, this, when you look at this case, do we know if he's telling the truth or not, right? I mean, you can just look at the, the overarching crux of this case. Sorry, I almost lost my pen there. Um, the overarching crux of this case. Now, I've written here, what bloke wants the whole world to know that his lady has been beating him up, question mark. 
right? What man, what man out there wants the whole world to know that my lady has been beating me up? No man wants that, right? So, and I, and all of this is tied in here with this Saturn in the seventh, because Saturn wants justice. Saturn wants truth here and look at what this man is doing. He is sacrificing his own reputation and he's putting the truth higher. He's, he's, he's putting himself lower and he's putting the truth higher. To me, this is, this is really all about this Saturn in the seventh house. And this is the work that he's come back here to do. It's a retrograde planet that we've got here. So when you have a retrograde planet, and this is what I believe with the retrograde planet. I think that is you, you come back to prove to yourself that you, you'll win this time or you'll succeed or you'll do it right. You'll get it right this time. Something like this, right? So you, you, it's something you want to prove to yourself. And the, uh, this is how I think we know that he's on the side of truth because yeah what bloke wants the whole world to know his lady has been beating him up there's no man that wants that especially not him you look at him he's he's got tattoos you know he he portrays that hey i'm really tough i'm a tough guy right what man like that would want the whole world to know the truth you see so it's truth truth he values truth higher than his own reputation. So fascinating because this is a defamation case and he doesn't want to be defamed, you see? So his, his suing of her is that, hey, don't defame me. But in the process of that, I'll defame me. Like it's just, oh, so much in this case. I just, and this is that Saturn in the seventh. It wants justice. Okay, it, it, there's a massive justice component here. Um, yeah, it's showing he's sacrificing his personal reputation even more in honor of the truth. He cares about the truth. Now on my next slide, I've got what are the lessons Saturn in the seventh house? Let's take a look at all of these lessons. I'll just check the time. Yeah, it's gonna cut out any moment. Saturn in the seventh, house people may have low self-esteem in relationships initially okay initially in their life they will and, and they'll experience lessons around being treated badly possibly being you know, being a doormat and things like that uh, i've got the note here they may attract in bullies because they have to learn how to erect boundaries okay that that is something they need to get good at this time around and saturn in the seventh can get so good at it that look at what look at what Johnny has done. He said that I won't I will never give you my eye contact again. And he's in that courtroom with her every day, right? Look at that boundary there. You will you will not have access to my eyes. Wow, right? He's doing the boundaries, he's doing it great. So he's 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 erecting the boundaries. He has to, right? He has to. Everything is made it this way. Uh, Saturn in the seventh, there will be age differences in relationships. Yeah, that's there. Um, you will learn to be straight and honest. Very true. You will learn to be straight and honest. And that's why I think, I mean, with a chart like this, he kind of can't afford to not be honest. You know, he has to be honest with a chart like this, with a Saturn like that. He won't get away with, with being a liar. Got the note here you can become an excellent chess player a formidable opponent yeah definitely but they are not a player they are serious about love yeah he, he wouldn't be a player he wouldn't be like um, flippant with someone's heart or play with it I, I think he would be serious about love with this saturn in the seventh i also have here a note what matters more is justice right look at that he's he's diminishing himself and put the truth higher. That's more important. I've also got the note here, you don't take what you didn't earn. You see, and that's so important for, you know, someone who wants to be his partner. Or, this is just a general thing. You don't take what you didn't earn, you know, like so Amber, if she's trying to 
take money from him or why she didn't earn it she shouldn't be taking money from him similarly if a lady has Saturn in the seventh right and this is what Bernardo Mendez he's a really good relationship coach he talks about this he talks about how men shouldn't touch women in ways they haven't earned I love that I, yeah he, he explains that and I think with a Saturn in the seventh lady people intuitively know that oh you know yeah better not mess with this one kind of thing because if she's got Saturn in the seventh people will just intuitively know I think uh, not to be inappropriate with that person do you investigate someone properly slowly over time that's really important you know and, and that's one of the other things that has become clear to me through looking at relationships and, and doing the work that I do working with you guys all this kind of thing one of the things I'm seeing is that just as children are missing out on a childhood in this modern world I think people who are dating are missing out on courtship you know people who are dating are missing out on you know take time you know and um, get to really get to know someone before you uh, make a commitment or do something let someone into your life do something as big as letting someone into your life you really want to take your time there The other thing I have is a note here that Saturn may use you as a point through which you will have to deliver justice. And you may not want to do that, but you will have to do that, right? Saturn will use you to deliver justice to other people. Yeah, I have the note here, you may not want to, but you might have to. It's karmic. Apologies guys, the camera didn't get cut. That's not what happened. I had someone at the door, so that's all fine now, but I've lost my train of thought. I think I was talking about the fact that Saturn may use you as a point through which you will have to deliver justice. Yeah, that is an interesting one. Saturn in the seventh house in this way. In fact, it's in Capricorn here, so this could be to do with a business partner, but it's more likely to do with a marriage or a romantic partner. Saturn will use you to deliver justice to that person usually the person who holds this placement they don't want to do that you see they don't take pleasure out of it this concept of pleasure out of justice is a really interesting thing and I think we're seeing that play out with this case we're seeing the whole internet is really getting uh, kind of like a form of sort of self-righteous enjoyment or pleasure there's a pleasure that's coming out of this people are really enjoying this case in, in quite an incredible way and I think it's anyone who's ever been bullied or treated badly is is certainly you know uh, in, enjoying seeing that hopefully some justice will be done etc etc and that is really interesting it reminded me of um, I don't know if you've ever seen that film Crocodile Dundee I saw that because I grew up here in Australia and that was like the only film that Australia ever made and so basically there's this brilliant scene in there where I think Crocodile D has taken his lady out for a date something like that and they go out and this young guy with a knife turns up and he flicks open his pen knife and he's like hand over your wallet and Crocodile Dundee is just Aussie and casual and he goes Oh, look at that you call that a knife do you and he says you know he basically whips out a machete and he's like well this is a knife you know and and I bring that up because that is kind of what's going on with this case that's one of the things I've observed that's happening here with this case that it's like she has pushed him so much and just kept tapping on his window and pushed him to this point where he's just like right that's it you want to fight me let's fight you know okay you, you show me a little pen knife well guess what I've got a machete we're bringing it all out we're bringing all the truth out you know and you're not gonna like it kind of thing right and he's like and I'll even sacrifice my own reputation even though I'm fighting for my reputation I'll sacrifice it the truth is more important this is all Saturn in the seventh it's pretty incredible stuff but this thing of you know um, yeah he, he's brought out the the machete if we had, if we just take a look quickly at this d9 chart i will show you 
that uh, we've got Rahu Mars conjunct. Now we can read D9 as the spouse. So we can see that he's going to marry an aggressive spouse. Look at that, we've got Uranus there. So something's reminding him of childhood um, because that's the same signature there. So we've got a spouse who's got a Mars Rahu conjunction with Uranus there too. This is a person who is aggressive, who wants to fight. But equally, this is D9. This is who he is internally, right? And he has got, it. you could see it as a kind of like a concealed weapon, right? He's, he's got, he's pulling out the machete now. He's just, he's like, I've had enough. And if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. And he's invited all the cameras. He said, right, we bring the cameras 24 seven. In fact, you can put a camera on me 24 seven. You do whatever you have to do. We're doing this, we're doing it for real. It's extraordinary. It's an absolutely amazing, amazing case. But I think that's what, where the internet is getting quite a lot of pleasure jumping on the justice for Johnny Bandwagon. There's a lot of self-righteous pleasure that people are gaining from seeing this kind of thing play out. I don't know, I, I don't particularly get that from this. I, I feel bad for her as well, I do, because these are just two human beings, you know, they both made mistakes. I, I don't see that it's just, she's 100% evil and he's like 100% innocent flower. No, I don't see that. I think there's areas of gray uh, as well. He's got that overarching thing where he's like, you know, I'm prepared to tell the world that that you beat me up, right? So that's huge that he's brought that out. He's happy to be, um, to for that to all be known, you know? And that's what's making him very appealing and attractive to the big crowd, because that's very impressive. That's massive courage. That's this Shasha Mahapurush yoga, the yoga of the great man is rising here. It's like, well, the truth trumps everything. You know, the truth is the most important thing. And he'll sacrifice himself for it. It's pretty incredible. So that's Saturn in the, in the seventh house. Yeah, amazing. So now what's gonna be the outcome of this case? I have the note here, if Saturn is able to, he will be rewarding Johnny. I do think so because we've got Saturn dipping into Aquarius. This is third from his moon. I'm just gonna bring that up. It's third from his moon right now for 2.5 months. So if it's called within this next 2.5 months, Saturn will reward him. I do think Saturn will reward him He's been through an awful Sadi Sati period. This last seven and a half years has been extremely, extremely difficult, which kind of does indicate to me that he himself is being corrected for, for past misdeeds, okay? So that's why I don't think he's a total 100% innocent flower, okay? That's why I think that, because he has had pain during his Sadi Sati period. When I consult you guys, a lot of you guys get married before your Sadi Sati. Maybe you even have a child in the early part of your Sadi Sati period, but you know, you kind of have Groundhog Day for the whole time because Saturn doesn't have to do too much work with you, right? He's had to do some work here with Johnny Depp. So this is why I kind of think, you know, I do question why he's been in this situation, but I do see, I definitely see a revival for his career. That'll start next year onwards for 2.5 years. He should have a very good time. As for this case, I think if he is to be rewarded, it, Saturn will be doing that and that's uh, coming up. But equally, if things don't go in his favor, which is possible, and the outcome could be quite mixed. The outcome could be, you know, it could be a bit deflating actually for the big internet crowd um, that has gathered. I don't know, it's possible. The reason I say that is because Mars is in here with Jupiter. And this is the thing that I'm not liking the look of for Johnny Depp, what I'm seeing here. So if they're gonna call this on the 27th, which is what I've read, that on the 27th they're gonna call this, uh, or they're giving the result or whatever it is. What I'm seeing here, 27th May is before the hemming. And I'm gonna be talking about the hemming for each one of you in the upcoming mini reports, right? 
So what I've written here is if it's called on the 27th, he may not experience a clean cut from her. Hemming, when there's hemming in a chart, they also talk about with Pap Car 3 and things like that, there's like a scissor type action or there's squeezing. So Jupiter's going to be squeezed here. But I'm also looking at the scissor type action to see, well, is he going to get a clean cut from her? Is this truly over? Is this truly done? In such a way that he doesn't have to come back and do it again and she doesn't have to come back and do it again, right? And this is the thing I'm not too sure about. Apologies, I had to cut the camera again. The battery was flashing at me, so I had to start again. Right, I think I was talking about 27th May is pre the hemming of Jupiter. If it's called on the 27th, he may not experience a clean cut from her. After the 27th of May, when Jupiter is being hemmed, perhaps he could experience a clean cut from her. That is possible. It's a tricky one because when there's hemming, if Jupiter is to give benefit, he won't be able to as much as well. But it's a Pop Car 3 sort of situation. That's, the Pop Car 3 is really officially July onwards. But because a Pop Car 3 it can be cutting, it can be, there can be a scissor type effect that happens there. The other thing that we have happening at this time is his second Saturn return. He is currently pretty much exactly going through second Saturn return, uh, 9th June. So Saturn is basically on natal Saturn at the moment. It's pretty incredible. Both Saturn and Jupiter are looking to set him up financially for the next 30 years. And I do think a revival in his career is very much on the cards. That will come. That will come start of next year onwards for 2.5 years. There should be, I would imagine, a very good revival of his career. He's won a lot of new fans. So that, that'll be fine. But in terms of this case, I'm not sure how to cut it. It kind of feels like there's something messy about it. And also we've got Mars fourth from his moon and it's ninth from his ascendant in a watery place, in the watery Pisces with Jupiter here. To me, it just feels frustrated. Dasha wise, we're running Jupiter, Venus, Mars, Rahu, all those are active. Yes, that's correct. And I have seen many times when Jupiter, Venus is on, that's when a divorce happens. Interestingly, that can be a time when people get married, of course, but equally can be a time in the Dasha timetable where a big break happens where it's just over and you do not see that person ever again. It's finished, right? And that's what he's got here in his chart. It's the end. It's the end of this relationship for sure. And I think, you know, gosh, what an ending, right? This has been massive. And I could imagine with this kind of chart that he's got, there would be a part of him that would just be absolutely hating this. Like that's just, this is the worst thing. But equally, he's going to find massive strength from all of this. And I think it will open up. He will become a stronger partner. He'll become a better partner to someone. And he will, you know, and, and Saturn in the seventh wants to be married. You know, I, I do think that's important for a Saturn in the seventh. And I think I could, I could imagine he would take his time next time, but I equally, I think he can uh, bounce back from this. He can, of course, he'll love again, you know, and then she'll resurface and love again and all that too. So I'm not seeing anything too bad here for anyone. All right, well, let's get into the mini reports for all the signs. Aries, Aries, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now this is Aries Ascendant, Aries Moon, or Aries Sun, if you are any one of these, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology, welcome, you are in the right place. So now we've got some hemming happening for Jupiter. Jupiter is going to be hemmed in between, now I will tell you, it's, it's between, I'm just gonna bring it up on my chart here, it's between Saturn and Mars. Um, and that's across the month of June. And now in July, these planets will be in a proper Pabkatri Yoga. Now Pabkatri Yoga is putting a lot of pressure 
on Jupiter. It's squeezing Jupiter and it means that the benefit that Jupiter can provide to you, he can't really provide that to you. So this is all happening for you across the month of June and July in your 12th house. So you might feel you're not making progress spiritually. Okay, you might feel that you aren't growing. Your expenses might be squeezed at this time. Actually, that could be a good thing where you don't spend as much. Okay, so this could actually work in your favor. Now the sun is strong in your third house. It's fantastic mid-month onwards. You're going to have the courage to present yourself at work. You're going to have the courage to go for better jobs if that's something you want to do or to grow your network in some way. Mercury is really well placed in your second house. So you're going to speak with flair and intelligence. Uh, it's a good time to speak up and it's a good time to be heard. Okay, whether that's with family or at work. There's a full moon on the 14th of June in Scorpio, Jaisa Nakshatra in the 8th house. So this could be lighting up secrets. This could be lighting up family secrets in particular. You might gain some kind of deep understanding about something to do with your family or the dynamic of your family. There's a new moon on the 29th of June in Gemini Ardra Nakshatra that's happening in your third house. So this could be a great time to plant a seed for your next job, uh, perhaps stepping stones. What, what is it that you envisage for your career going forward? What would you love to see happen next? You know, what, what is that thing that you're wishing for? So really plant a seed for that. Wish for that if you can. Now this is happening in your third house. It's also a really great time to get some fresh ideas, uh, especially if you're a writer or any of that, you know, definitely keep a journal close by. You might have some amazing ideas. But Aries, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now there's some hemming, 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 hemming. I have to get this word right, don't I? Hemming on Jupiter. This is happening across June, okay? And then we're going to have a big proper official Pop Car 3 Yoga happening across the month of July. So it's going to be largely the same effect. Basically, Jupiter's being squeezed by Saturn and Mars. It's uncomfortable and Jupiter can't produce the good results that he would want to produce for you. Now, this is happening across June and July in your 11th house because it's kind of gently building up. You'll feel it more in July. So you might feel that you're not able to materialize wealth as easily at this time. You might feel that it's hard to get things started. Um, your social scene might be impacted as well. You know, going out as much or just don't feel inspired or something like that. Saturn is strong in your 10th house. Keep working hard, keep being humble, okay? That is just such a remedy for everything. Work hard and be humble. And honestly, that is a great formula for long-term success. So just do that. Uh, Venus is brilliant. Yeah, Venus is great. She's in your 12th house. This is a good month to indulge in escapism spirituality, travel for fun if you can, okay, if you want to travel or if you just want to get away a little bit more frequently to your local shops or your local cafe. That's my idea of travel at the moment. I'm a bit limited. So that's all I can do, but um, that works for me. I just pretend like I'm in Europe when I go to my little cafe and it, it works. It really does. Now, uh, you could escape into TV shows or, you know, um, good books or entertainment as well. That's, that's another thing that you can definitely do at this time, Taurus. Now, there's a full moon happening on the 14th of June in Scorpio, Jaisa Nakshatra. This is happening in your seventh house. So this is a great time to reflect on love, on the hidden dynamics that keep your love life from flourishing. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, because we've all got stuff, you know, lodged in our subconscious, or in our hearts, our minds, we've all got things that maybe are preventing love, our love lives from really flourishing. So maybe that might become clear to you. You might see what's happening within you, okay, as opposed to looking at the other person. Don't look at the other person, look at you. How are you holding yourself back from experiencing more love in your life? That'll be a beautiful thing to do on the 14th of June. 
And then on the 29th of June, we have a new moon in Gemini, Ardra, Nakshatra. For you, this is happening in your second house. So this is a great time to plant a seed for more money, okay, for abundance, that big wealth, you know, or, or to be able to put away more of your regular money towards your savings. Maybe that's what you're wishing for, you know, a kind of like baseline shift up so that you are able to just put away a little bit more. Um, maybe you'll get some ideas on, on how to do that. But Taurus, all up, despite the hemming, don't worry about that so much. I know it's not great. It is, it's squeezing everybody in some area of their life. So just know that that's going on across June and July. But it's a great time for you to indulge actually with Venus in the 12th. Indulge in your spirituality. Take a bit of time out. Watch fun stuff. Enjoy yourself. Try and enjoy yourself this month, Taurus. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Gemini Ascendant, Gemini Moon, Gemini Sun. And this is as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. If you don't know your sign, you can check it out below. So we've got some hemming happening, Gemini. Now this is happening on Jupiter. This is across the month of June and July. It turns into a kind of full-blown Pavkatri Yoga in July. But across June, you're going to feel some tension as well. And this is basically two planets, Saturn and Mars, are hemming Jupiter. Jupiter is going to feel squeezed. So for you, this is happening in your 10th house. So basically, you might feel that you're not able to grow your career at this time. That's all. So you might be trying really hard or feeling ambitious or wanting to get ahead or wanting to get on with it, but you're feeling this like squeeze or nothing's happening or you know, I don't really feel like I'm going anywhere. That's okay, that's just for this time. When it's like that, keep working. Saturn is watching you all the time. And if you work hard, he'll catch you up later. He'll give you extra later when he can. Okay, so always keep working hard. Sun in the 12th might keep you awake at night until mid-June. I know that the um, most recent full moon that we had, gosh, that kept me up the whole night. I, I really feel these things now. So just observe and see, but don't feel too bad if that's the case. You can always get up and just meditate. Um, that's something I've been doing and that is a really good thing to do. It's the perfect time to meditate because everything's so quiet. You know, it's a really great time. Uh, to meditate. So if you're up, just sit up in the bed and meditate. You know, put your timer on your phone and, and do a bit of meditation. Now Venus is feeling very social to mid-June and then she might want to indulge in spirituality or entertainment for the rest of the month. So it's a little bit like Taurus. You get to just indulge in some entertainment, watch a few pick cards, you know, something like that. Um, enjoy yourself, Gemini. Take some time out. Now at the end of the month, Mars steps into your 11th house. This is great for pursuing next steps in career. So you are going to have some good energy uh, towards the end of June when it comes to your career. You, you will have energy and opportunities and, and, and better things happening there. It's certainly good from a Mars point of view. So Jupiter is not able to deliver as much. Focus on Mars. Focus on what you can do and that should bring some results in for you. Now there's a full moon happening on the 14th of June in Scorpio, Jeshta Nakshatra. This is happening for you in your sixth house. So some hidden dynamic at work might become obvious, especially in relation to competitors. Maybe someone's competing with you and they are not doing right by you. Maybe they seem to be on your team, but they're actually going for your territory or competing. Or At this full moon, that might become just so obvious to you. You'll see it. You'll just be like, wow. So keep your eyes open for that. It's on the 14th of June. And on the 29th of June, we have a new moon in Gemini, Ardra, Nakshatra. It's happening in your first house. This is a great time this is your new moon, Gemini. This is a great time to plant seeds for a brand new you. Okay, if you want to reinvent yourself, who do you want to be? Like, who do you want to be in five years, in 10 years? Can you see yourself 
as that future you. And I know sometimes when I've done like um, spiritual work and you know, like I've been put under a light hypnosis or something one time, my very old version of me came through. That's what the um, healer told me. It was pretty incredible. He said it was a very old, genteel version of you who turned up. And apparently, I can't believe I'm telling you all this, but there we go, I'll tell you. <laughs> she, he said that she said, this old version of me said, don't worry about her, she's going to be fine. So my old version of me came back to the healer and said, don't do any work on her, she's going to be fine. And I would do something like that, wouldn't I? I was a bit annoyed actually, because I was like, oh, I didn't get full healing from this guy who's really amazing, he's a Barbara Brennan practitioner, and I didn't get the full thing, because my old me came and told him not to do it. Anyway, but this could be, this is the time for you to think about yeah, who do you want to be? Who, who's that uh, older version of you that you want to be? You know, I've also got the note here, is there something you've always wanted to do? This is time to visualize. So Gemini, that is a fun activity for you there on the 29th uh, at the new moon. But I'm liking, I'm liking that Mars is going to step into your 11th house at the end of the month. That's going to be really good. I feel like in the meantime, just look after yourself. You know, it feels like June is not the most exciting time. If you're really wanting to get ahead, there are going to be better transits. July is most likely to be a lot better. But I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Moon, Cancer Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now we are going to have some hemming on Jupiter. So what is hemming? Hemming is when a good planet like Jupiter is hemmed in between two difficult planets like Saturn and Mars. Okay, so you're going to feel this hemming effect across the month of June and then we have a full blown pop car three yoga happening in July and that's going to be affecting your ninth house. So you might feel your ability to take, to take charge of your own life is now diminished okay you, you may not feel like you've totally got your hands on the wheel or I want to do this but I can't um, you, you just might not feel as in control of your life I have to note here your authority and sense of personal power might be challenged at this time or it just might be diminished in some way that's not game over you know you can always work in the now and you can go beyond all of this stuff all right so that's always important to remember work with the law of attraction, work with you know, spiritual teachings and techniques, and you can always really go beyond these things, especially if you work in the now, okay? That's where all your power is. But if you're kind of just going along on autopilot coordinates, yeah, you might feel like your power is diminished somehow when it comes to taking charge of your own life. Now we've got sun in the 12th. This might keep you awake at night, yeah. Uh, that's after mid-June, so you can observe that and see if that's the case. See if you notice that you're getting a few more sleepless nights after mid-June. We've got Venus and Mercury having lots of fun in the 11th house. That's brilliant, 18th onwards. That's really great for creativity. It's great for being social, great for going out, great for having fun with people. Okay, so you might want to be doing all those things uh, 18th June onwards. Now the full moon on the 14th of June, this is in Scorpio, Jaysa Nakshatra in your fifth house. So if you have hidden feelings for someone, you may feel them a bit more intensely at this time. You may experience the fullness of your feeling for someone. Um, then we've got the new moon on the 29th of June in Gemini, Ardha Nakshatra. This is happening in your 12th house. This is a great time to plant seeds for yourself spiritually, it's a great time to wish for renewal in your subconscious. If it's something you've been trying to let go of or some dynamic or pattern, it's a great time to just ask you know, for that to be let go. I just want to let go. I, I, want, I don't want to keep doing that same pattern in my life again. This is a potential really great strong window where you can, you know, once and for all, just put something to an end in that regard. You might also be a bit more psychic at this time. Okay, the veil is going to be very thin for you and you might come up with new ideas. You might get downloads, insights. Um, definitely keep a journal or a dream journal with you and see if you can note down what happens around the 29th 
of June. But all up Cancer, it's looking like a really nice month for you, I think. Don't worry too much about the pub card three thing. That's affecting everyone anyway. Everyone's being squeezed in some area of their life. So, you know, it's, it's an equal playing field. Uh, but thank you so much for stopping by Cancer. And we are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now there is some hemming happening on Jupiter. Okay, so when there's a hemming going on in the sky, we've got a good planet like Jupiter in between something like uh, Saturn and Mars, which is exactly what we have in June, across the month of June. And then we have a full-blown pub card through yoga happening in July. Now this is happening in your eighth house. So you might feel that your ability to let go of old things is difficult at this time. You might be trying to let go of something and you might find it hard to do. Okay, so uh, the other thing is equally, because there is, it could be a scissor type action as well. And that's the difficulty with yoga is because sometimes it can, be, it can be a bit of a flip side. You might find it very easy to let go or maybe it could be the kind of thing where like internally, you're finding it hard to let go of old things, but then when it comes to clutter clearing or something like that, it's just easy. You're like, oh yeah, chuck that, I don't need it anymore. Like maybe this is a good time to clutter clear. You can try and see how this manifests for you. I'm, I'm kind of not sure. It's either you're gonna find things it, it difficult to let go of old things, or you find that this is a perfect time to clutter clear. Try it out, see how this energy is gonna work for you. Or it could be that thing of internally, it's difficult to let go but physically you're able to, to do so. See how that manifests. Um, now we've got the sun in the 11th house from 16 June onwards. This is brilliant for your career, this is fantastic. We've also got um, Venus and Mercury uh, are going to be in, did I say sun in the 11th? I hope I did. Sun in the 11th, 16 June onwards, brilliant for your career. You're gonna have Venus and Mercury in your 10th house also supporting your career. Okay, so you're gonna be speaking with flair and brilliance at this time. It could even be something very stylish about what you're doing or the way you're presenting yourself and or your work. Maybe you're putting some artistry into what you do as well, even if you're an accountant. Maybe there's something, I don't know, you're, you're doing something with Excel that no one else is doing, I don't know. But you're speaking with flair, brilliance, style, and you're building your career, you're doing well. So I'm liking this energy for you, Leo. Now there's a full moon happening on the 14th of June in Scorpio Jaisa Nakshatra in your fourth house. So you may gain some deep understanding of some hidden dynamic that is connected with your mother uh, or how your mother raised you or there's some understanding that you're gonna gain. You're gonna gain some incredible understanding about how you were raised, about your relationship with your mother. It's gonna be some aha moment I kind of feel like this is going to be a good thing or this is going to release you somehow or and I don't feel that you need to speak to your mother or any of that it's not that kind of thing it's just an internal kind of thing and I feel like you're going to gain some deep understanding that will help you as you go forward there's going to be some good outcome from this full moon and it's going to be quite subconscious okay we're in the fourth house here so some subconscious thing uh, will make sense to you, make life easier as well. Now on the 29th of June, there's a new moon happening in Gemini Ardra Nakshatra. This is happening in your 11th house. So this could be a great time to plant seeds for new friends, for new opportunities, for big money, right? Um, next steps in your career or for new projects to take off or you could, you could visualize that next big thing. What is that? You know, visualize that and wish for it on this new moon. So that's 29th of June. But Leo, I'm liking the look of things, especially for your career. This is a really good time for you. So I would say just, just it's quite a career focused time, Leo. It always has been. Every report I do for you is all about career. But definitely just put your attention there. You should be able to incrementally grow and, and do well with these energies. I wanna thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now gonna welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome, thank you so much for joining. So now, there's going to be some hemming on Jupiter. What do I mean by this? So Jupiter is a good planet, and Jupiter is gonna be hemmed between Saturn and Mars. This is across 
the month of June and then across the month of July that turns into a full-blown Pabkatri Yoga where it's, it's kind of official that these two are squeezing Jupiter. And it may mean that you do not get the benefits that Jupiter would like to give you. So for you, this is happening in your seventh house. Yeah, this is not great. This isn't great to do with your relationship with your partner, okay? And this could be your business partner, this could be the person you're married to, but um, it might be that it's difficult to understand each other at this time or something along those lines. Uh, or even other people, if you're not married, or you don't have a business partner, it's just other people. Something about, you know, maybe you're not getting on with other people, other people aren't understanding you as well at this time, or it's hard to make progress in your business if you're self-employed as well. We've got Sun in the 10th house from 16 June onwards. This is brilliant for your career. I'm really happy that you've got some good energy here, Virgo. You've got Venus in your ninth house that's also supporting your career. Mercury will be in your ninth house as well. Mercury might be possibly frustrated at this time. Again, if there's any part of you that's feeling a bit frustrated or you know, just put your head down, work, be humble. It's a great remedy because Saturn sees you do that and he sees you're working hard and he will reward you later when he can. Okay, so always put your head down you do your work so it's a winning formula for uh, any any tough time now we've got full moon happening 14th june scorpio jesha nakshatra this is happening in your third house so you might gain some deep understanding of some hidden dynamic in your subconscious mind that's been holding you back what's been holding you back do you know what that is what what holds you back and it, this could be related to confidence courage it could be related to your mind even even and how you comprehend things or how you view things as well this could even be to do with perception as well even why not because mind some um, astrologers do read mind from the third as well and choices as well But what I'm seeing here on, in the full moon on the 14th of June for you, I'm seeing that something's being illuminated. You gain some kind of understanding on this full moon and you're able to release something. I think this is a good uh, full moon and it has to do with a deep hidden dynamic within. Okay, so see if you can become aware of what that is. Now on the 29th of June, there's a new moon in Gemini, Ardha Nakshatra in your 10th house. So this is a great time to plant seeds for your career. Okay, what would you love to have happen next? You know, if you could just wave a magic wand and see yourself in a new role, what would it be? What would excite you? What's exciting for you to do? You know, and, I, and, and that's so important. We spend so much of our lives at work that I really think it's so important to have work that excites you, that inspires you, that you really want to do, that you want to throw yourself into. What is that? And where is that work where you can be yourself, right? Where you can be your full self. That is a great thing to aim for. So Virgo, I'm really liking the energy that's here for you. Uh, I know it's going to be hard with you and your partner, you and your sweetheart, whoever that is, right? That could be challenging or, or just maybe a bit uninspiring or just not much happening there, you know, not much growth or something. But uh, Career stuff's looking great, so just, just keep working, and I'm wishing you well, Virgo. We are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Libra Ascendant, Libra Moon, Libra Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. We've got some hemming going on in the sky. We've got Jupiter, beautiful Jupiter. It's going to be hemmed in between Saturn and Mars. And when this happens, Jupiter is not really able to deliver the good that he wants to deliver to you. So across June, we're going to have this hemming effect and that turns into a full-blown Pabkatri situation for all of July as well. And for you, that's happening in your sixth house. So you might feel that your ability to compete in the workplace is difficult somehow, I don't know, you, you're competing, you're trying to get ahead, but you're not able to. Um, it, it just feels hard to get ahead at this time or to be listened to um, 
or to be understood, but this has something to do with the workplace for sure. You've got the sun in the eighth house from, let's see, well, that's going to be up to mid-June. This could be draining on your health. This could be a little bit of a challenge there. Sun in the ninth mid-month onwards could have you experience some run-ins with authority figures or your bosses at work. Uh, so that's not ideal either. So sun is not ideal for you uh, at this time. You might want to just take it a bit easy if you can. Now, there's Mercury and Venus there. They're in a really nice spot actually. They're in the eighth house. So for you this month, of June, it's, it's a really nice time for you to recharge with your family. If you can be with your family, you know, you want to recharge um, with them, take a little trip even with them. If you can take a short trip, like a tiny trip, and there's Mercury and Venus, you're not traveling far, but you're going somewhere nice. And maybe a day trip, how about that? Is there a day trip you can do uh, with the family? That could be really good. Now there's a full moon happening on the 14th of June in Scorpio, Jay Sanakshatra. For you, this is happening in your second house. So you might gain some deep understanding of some hidden dynamic in relation to your family. Something will become clear to you and it's going to help you understand more fully who you are. Something will just make sense. You'll have an aha moment to do with your family. And things will be clear. You're going to gain some more understanding. Could be some more understanding about your place in this family, why you've incarnated into this family. It's going to be something quite deep, right? Something quite quite deep and personal. This is Scorpio. Okay, so this is something that take you by surprise. But some kind of learning or something can become illuminated or clear to you at this time. It's really going to help you on your self-development path okay good time to be watching coaching videos about relationships actually um, new moon 29th june gemini ardra nakshatra in your ninth house so it's a great time to plant seeds for your personal sense of authority and for your ability to care for your own self right for your own independence from other people, from authority figures, from bosses. You know, as we grow, as we go forward, we're always looking to take our power back. How can I become more responsible for my own self, right? And this is a beautiful time on the new moon, 29 June, for you to plant seeds and wish for more ability to take charge of your own life and take your power back from society, from anywhere it's been invested, right? Family, opinions, friends, wherever. You want to yeah, take more power for yourself. Okay, Libra. Well, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this is Scorpio Ascendant, Scorpio Moon, Scorpio Sun. If you don't know your sidereal Vedic signs then <laughs> click on the link below you'll be able to check that out now this month we've got some hemming on jupiter so we've got mars and saturn they are jupiter's in between jupiter's the good guy and he's stuck in between two difficult guys right so we've got this interesting hemming situation now across june we're going to be feeling this and then july onwards we've got a full-blown pop car through yoga okay but i thought i'd just read it this month you know so that you know this is all going to be happening in your fifth house. We're kind of feeling it this month, right? So this is happening in your fifth house. So you might feel your ability to be creative is limited at this time. You might have all these creative ideas that, gosh, I'd love to make this, I'd love to make that. I mean, this is the story of my life. I must have hemming like my whole life <laughs> because I always have like 100 million ideas, but right? I just never have time or energy to do them, right? Little bit by little bit, I get a tiny thing out, you know, here and there. I find it hard, but yeah, I mean, you might find that you've got all these ideas, you want to do stuff, but where's the energy, where's the time? The other thing that this could manifest uh, at this time, this papakathri, this hemming type thing, that if you have children, you might feel that your relationship with them isn't flourishing or it's just limited somehow or it's not flourishing. Or this could be your employees if you're a boss. You just might feel like, you know, I've been 
trying to tell them we need to do X, Y, Z, but we're just not moving or something like that could be happening. Now we've got sun in the seventh house from up to mid June. Hang on a minute. What have I written there? Sun in the seventh up to mid June. Yes, you know, sun in the seventh to mid June. This might be challenging to your relationships actually. Um, then you're going to have sun in the eighth mid month onwards. That's going to be, yeah, again, that's challenging to your relationships. So this is not the best time actually uh, for your marriage or your time with your partner or something like that. Sun is going to be in the seventh and the eighth. You know, when that happens, um, sometimes sometimes we can want to be the center of attention you know, in the relationship, right? This can be kind of ego in a relationship and things like that, that could be highlighted. I have the note here, it's a good time to be humble and not too demanding in your relationships at this time. But the other thing that's beautiful about the sun in the seventh and the eighth is that you can recognize that you are there for others. Okay, and let's not forget, so uh, Carl Jung, I think he had his uh, son in the seventh, didn't he? Son in the seventh can be very much there for another person. You can be very good at empathy and things like that. So in that instance, be there for others, but also make sure you look after yourself. This is not the most ideal area for the sun for health. You might be feeling drained or tired. So if you are quite the empath and you're always kind of there for others, Make sure you carve away some time for yourself. Make sure you, you know, put the brakes on and take some time out and have a day where you're in your pajamas and you're watching, you know, mindless viewing, <laughs> which I do every now and then. Any, any of you guys in my pick a card audience, you know, I took a day to myself. I think this was on Friday. I still did make a video while I was in bed recovering from a cold, but I, um, I didn't do a pick a card. I took I took a week off. So yeah, you might you might want to take a bit of time out with this strong sun energy. Now we've got Venus in the sixth. Okay, so this is not a great time for your love life for a little while now. Okay, because she's going to be in the sixth and she's going to go into the seventh. So we're looking at about I think it's mid July onwards. Your love life is going to be a lot better. We've got the full moon, fourteenth June, Scorpio, Jason, Nakshatra. This is happening in your first house. So you might gain some deep understanding of some hidden dynamic regarding your sense of self. My God, Scorpio, this is your full moon. So you might really come to some form of deep realization or understanding about yourself, about who you are, about why your life is the way it is, about why you feel the way you do, you know? And I feel like, to me, I'm getting a sense with this full moon, I think it could be illuminating just really deep hidden things for all of us, right? For you, it's for your whole sense of self. So this is your full moon. This is big. And I, and I just get the sense of something deep from within. You'll just have this aha. It will be amazing. So any personal development work that you do at this time should be very fruitful, okay? So if you're watching coaching videos or all that kind of thing, you're working on yourself, your inner work, it's a very good time. There's a new moon happening, 29th June, Gemini, Ardha, Nakshatra. For you, this is happening in your eighth house. This is a great time to plant seeds for your family or for your personal life. This could even be a great time to wish for a new baby or a new love, new family member. You know, um, you can wish for some big things, but you can make a wish for yourself and your family. What would you love to see all of you doing together or experiencing? Um, that could be a beautiful time to wish for that, Scorpio. But I mean, besides the Pop Car 3 and besides the sun um, being in some difficult places there, it's not looking like too bad a month. Uh, I tell you what's nice. Well, yeah, Venus, I haven't been too pro about Venus either. Let me just take a look for you, Scorpio, because I do want to give you some good news. You don't have too much good news here. You know what? It's your Rahu. Your Rahu in the six is great. Okay, so this is good for service. This is good for 
uh, pursuing your work. This is good for building your business. This is even good for winning legal cases and things like that. You do have some really nice energy here, Scorpio. Moon, I am wishing you well. You're also getting a taste of your Saturn dire period. Okay, so as I said for you, I think in some of the reports that could be a mixed period of time. You're going to start really feeling that um, Jan, Feb of next year onwards. But I want to thank you so much, Scorpio. And we are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is for Sagittarius ascendant moon or sun if you don't know your sidereal vedic ascendant moon or sun you can check that out in the link below but otherwise we're going to take a look at what's happening across this month so we've got jupiter being hemmed in between a couple of malefic planets so in between saturn and mars so good guy jupiter is being hemmed by bad guys um they're not bad guys Come on, they're great planets. I love Saturn and Mars. I think they're two of my favorites. But Jupiter is, is not feeling great. So, and that's important for you because you're a Sagittarius. And of course, this is your Lord. So there's hemming on Jupiter across the month of June. So Jupiter is feeling a bit uncomfortable across June. And he's feeling really uncomfortable for all of July when we have the full-blown Pop Card 3 yoga in the sky. This is happening in your fourth house. So you might feel that your ability to relax is difficult. It's difficult to relax at this time. That's one of the ways I'm seeing this, just in a very simple way. You might feel restless or you might feel like, should I be doing something? But then when you try to do something, it just doesn't really work or there's just this restlessness and you know, okay, I, I try and resolve this by doing something, but it's not so effective. There could also be something to do with your house. If you're doing renovations on your house or um, something to do with your house, something along those lines could be being impacted at this time. Sun in the sixth house, though, is brilliant. And this is from, so up to mid-June. Sun in the sixth up to mid-June is great for work. For legal cases for competition for success for being seen for achieving things okay so career-wise this is really good energy from 18 June onwards Venus is not in the best place for love so she's not going to be in a great spot until about 7th of August or so it's quite a while Sagittarius just bear that in mind and it doesn't mean it's not a good time for love be loving Always be loving. Just give out your love, but just don't expect too much in return. I think that's what I want to say there. The Mercury in the sixth is terrific for you all month. That is the best place for Mercury to be. He's enormously strategic there. Any strategic thinking you do at this time is going to be brilliant. There's a full moon happening on the 14th of June in Scorpio, Jesh, the Nakshatra. This is happening in your 12th house. So you might gain some deep understanding of some hidden dynamic in your subconscious mind. This is a great time for journaling out your feelings. This is also a really great time for watching personal development videos, coaching, all that kind of thing. You might have something illuminated about yourself. You might come to some deep understanding that, wow, I, I didn't know that about myself, but now that I know that, this can be some release that happens here or something where you go forward renewed or transformed it's really powerful it's a really good full moon i think so look out for that great time for journaling out your feelings there's a new moon happening on the 29th of june in gemini ardra nakshatra this is happening in your seventh house so this is a great time to plant seeds for improvements in your relationship or to wish for a relationship if you're single, right? Um, this is a great time for that. Or you might want to wish, I mean, you could even wish for travel, uh, you know, seventh house. Or if you're running a business, you want your business to take off and go well, you can, you can even do that. Uh, but Sagittarius, this is a pretty nice month for you. You got sun beautifully placed there. So thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to meet Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon, or Capricorn Sun. And if you don't know your placements, you can check it out in the link below. You'll be able to look up your sidereal Vedic placements 
and that's appropriate for this report. Now we've got hemming happening. So Jupiter, Jupiter the good guy is hemmed in between a couple of bad guys, right? Saturn and Mars. I don't see those two as bad guys. They're two of my favorites in fact. But Jupiter's not so happy, all right? He'd rather be somewhere else. He'd probably be rather be hanging out with the moon, I think. But anyway, uh, it says hemming on Jupiter happening across June. And then July onwards, there's a full-blown pop car three happening. So Jupiter's uncomfortable and he's not able to deliver all the good stuff that he really wants to give you. Um, interestingly for you, we've got Mars here. Mars is good here. Uh, but you might feel your ability to get ahead at work could be frustrated or challenged a bit. On the one hand, Mars is really well placed for you to do well at work, but, but Jupiter's not so happy and Jupiter's Lord of the house, okay? Lord of the house is in pub card three. So this is why I'm kind of feeling like, I don't know, I, because of Jupiter's hemming and frustration and he's uncomfortable I don't know what Mars is going to yield you I feel like maybe not much but try okay you got good energy there so try with work but if you're feeling frustrated or you're feeling that you're not getting ahead don't push it now Sun enters the sixth house from 16th June onwards that's great for your work so it's great for work legal cases competition from the 18th June onwards, Venus enters your fifth house and gives a boost to Mercury. So you might feel very creative. You might even feel quite romantic. Um, you might feel artistic. You know, it's quite nice. But then bear in mind that Venus then enters the sixth house and seventh house later. So, you know, part of June is fantastic for love, but then you might notice the next couple of months after that is just a bit of a dip with love but that'll that'll fire back up so don't worry too much Capricorn and anyway if love life is ever slow or not happening so much don't worry you give love out you know just don't expect too much back in return maybe uh, now there's a full moon happening 14th June Scorpio Jace the Nakshatra and this is happening in your 11th house so you might gain some deep understanding of some hidden dynamic connected in with your circle of friends uh, or something to do with your work colleagues. Maybe you become illuminated about something. Maybe you hear some information as to do with your friend or someone in your network circle or something like that or something makes sense to you or you get an aha moment. Something along these lines um, could be happening 14th June. And then we've got a new moon 29th June Gemini Ardra Nakshatra and this is happening for you in your sixth house. So this is a great time to plant seeds, you know, what to wish for. Well, wish for some improvements in your career. Wish that you are able to serve other people even more, like that your capacity to serve grows or that you can really um, help humanity, help others, help people through your service, through what it is that you do. So Capricorn, this is looking quite good for you. I'm loving the energy of the sun for you. And Venus and Mercury are having a good time as well. So enjoy this month, Capricorn. And we are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'll just check the time. We're okay. We're not too bad. And my hair's not too messy either. Okay. <laughs> um, Henning, there's going to be... Oh, before that, uh, this is Aquarius Ascendant. Aquarius moon, Aquarius sun. And if you don't know your sidereal Vedic astrology signs, then click on the link below and you will be able to find that out. Now, this month we've got hemming on Jupiter. Okay, so Jupiter is being hemmed in between a couple of challenging planets. So we've got Mars, we've got Saturn, and we've got Jupiter in the middle. And Jupiter's, because he's uncomfortable there, he's not feeling able to deliver the good stuff to you. So we're going to be feeling this across June. And then we have a full blown pub car through yoga happening where that dynamic is intensified. This is across July. Okay, this is happening in your second house. Oh, Aquarius, my heart bleeds for you. Yes, I know. You, you, the Aquarians have written that the money has not been good. I know you've been squeezed so much financially and I'm telling you, you're being squeezed again. This is just so annoying. Aquarius, things are gonna get better financially, okay? They really are. This is just a short burst here. So just hang in there. I've got the note here, yeah, you might feel your ability to save money or to put spare money away 
has been wiped out or it's not happening so yeah this is going to lift off you early august onwards okay so don't worry hang in there right now you've got the sun in the fourth from your sign until mid month so be extra careful if you're moving uh, you might feel tired as well you might feel physically tired then you're going to have the sun entering the fifth house mid month onwards there could be issues at work be humble keep working you know put your head down keep working don't uh, have any run-ins with the bosses or any of that not a great month for that so uh, but hang in there Aquarius you keep working and the other thing about when we keep working is that who's watching us Saturn is watching us you put your head down you keep working Saturn will catch you up okay he will he, you know, he has good transits and he will give you he will give you your due so you keep working hard and you'll see things will come good now full moon 14 june scorpio jason akshatra this is happening in your 10th house so you might gain some deep understanding of some hidden dynamic regarding your career and why it is that you do what you do okay something something will illuminate about your career and it will feel so good you'll understand something at a really deep level there'll be some unknown thing i remember when i was working with a lady called heidi sawyer she's a really brilliant coach um personal development specialist amazing amazing lady i did so much work with her in person and one of the quotes she had was i do what i do to be who i am i love that and now can can your career be an expression of who you are can you have all of that synced up wouldn't that be amazing so make your way towards that make your way towards a career where you're just being yourself you know that's 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 being paid to share your gifts you know what's natural to you that's quite ideal so be on your way to that place in your life now there's a new moon happening on the 29th of june and this is happening in gemini ardha nakshatra in your fifth house this is a great time to plant seeds for your creativity uh, or to, for or for a child if you want to become pregnant do you know what i did i google searched today i google searched um are there more pregnancies that happen on the new moon or something like that and yeah that that is a thing that is a thing definitely you know and i've seen that people who have that new moon placement like in the fifth house they get pregnant so easily so be careful actually you know if that's something you don't don't want to plan to do at the moment but if you want to wish for a child i know so many people who they're wishing to have a baby and this is a really good time for you to wish for that so aquarius thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome pisces we are now going to welcome pisces thank you so much pisces for joining so this is pisces ascendant pisces moon or pisces sun and if you don't know your sidereal vedic astrology signs you can click on the link and find those below but what do we have happening this month well we have got some hemming happening on jupiter jupiter is going to be hemmed between mars and saturn he's going to feel uncomfortable and perhaps not as able to deliver the good that he wants to give to you right he's, he's not going to feel so he's going to be squeezed and we're going to feel this across the month of june and then it becomes a full-blown papakathra yoga happening across july okay so this is intensified there now for you this is happening in your first house so i have the note that you may feel your life or your sense of self being squeezed at this time perhaps there is a feeling that it's hard to get ahead or you know i, I keep doing so much but i feel like i'm going nowhere what is this could well be the hemming that's going on and this is particularly important for you pisces because this is your ruling lord okay so you might be feeling this quite intensely don't worry this time is going to pass and you keep working towards your goals saturn will catch you up okay he's watching you all the time and if you're working hard and doing good work you know being humble getting your work done and doing your best that gets noted and that gets rewarded so you'll be caught up later okay but right now if you're feeling like i'm doing a lot of work but i feel like i'm going nowhere it's okay it's just a short time you got sun in the third house until mid-month i'm really happy that you've got that that's great for work yeah perhaps you can shine at work perhaps you can uh, grow your network a bit even though jupiter is being a bit squeezed at this time 
Venus is beautifully placed in your second house. Now we do have Rahu and Uranus there as well. You were one of the signs where I kind of identified this and I, I talked about this in the intro as well. And you're one of the signs where this kind of really strongly came up. So we've got Venus beautifully placed in the second. We've got Rahu and Uranus there. We've got Saturn's third aspect on Venus. Okay. We've got Lord of Venus, Mars, is 12 places away. So this is kind of interesting. This could be financial losses. This could be that you spend more or you feel this impulse to spend indulge or to spend on something but then there's some loss that happens as well or there's something that you you know um, have this incredible desire to do but maybe it's not the best thing to do so take care of that okay I, I did notice that for you guys um, and that's up until about 18th June now, there's a full moon happening on the 14th of June in Scorpio Jaisa Nakshatra in your ninth house so you might gain some deep understanding of some hidden dynamic regarding your sense of purpose or authority okay how in charge of your life are you really and that's such a fascinating subject isn't it and this is all that topic about free will and destiny how much in control are we really you know can we really just work directly in the now and go beyond the limitations of the stars which I always like to think we can do I think we can work in the now moment because remember with an astrology reading we're looking at the past we're looking at the future we're looking at the conceptual plane probably using our third eye as well or our mind our mental space but in the now that's where hundred percent of your power lies we can go beyond all these things so that is worth exploring there on the full moon on the 14th of June you might come to some understanding about how all of that stuff works for you and how you're able to take more charge or be more creative really have your hands in the clay and be designing your life a bit more consciously a bit more directly wouldn't that be nice right so the new moon on the 29th of June is happening in Gemini Ardha Nakshatra. This for you is happening in your fourth house. So this could be a great time to plant seeds for improvements to where you live. Maybe you are wishing for a brand new dream house. And I know I certainly always do. There are these beautiful um, videos that I watch on the internet on YouTube about these like new build houses in the English countryside. I've become addicted to watching those. I'm like, oh. I want to I want to buy that one I want to buy and of course I can't right now but you know it's fine this is a, this is the point this is what we have for you you can do this on the 29th of June new moon you can wish for that don't worry about the how let the universe do that you do the wishing right you put your order in and it's a good time to put your order in so if there's some place that you'd like to live or some thing you'd like to create for where you want to live Put that wish in there, Pisces, and see what happens, you know, and let the universe do the how, because that's what the universe does better than we do. So I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you to anyone who has also watched the entire video. I know there are some of you who do do that. I apologize, this one was a bit chopped. Uh, I had to chop it a little bit, but um, hopefully this has been a good video for you. And... As always, I look forward to seeing you next time.